Hello and welcome to my tutorial on machine learning and programming for the use of Forex or stock trading and analysis. For the programming we're going to be using the Python programming language, specifically Python 2.7. We're going to be using Python mainly for its user friendliness plus it's my uh, programming language of choice, but it also makes a good teaching programming language. The purpose of the series is to teach you some of the principles to machine learning, backtesting, statistical analysis, and some programming, not to influence your trading decisions. This is my verbal, legal statement. Uh, this video series is for educational purposes only and is not an offer or suggestion to deal with any financial markets. How you use this information is completely your responsibility and I'm not to be held liable. Okay? Sounds good. Our goal here is to use very basic machine learning principles to locate actionable trading rules within stocks or forex. Now I say basic for two reasons. One, I'm going to do my best to keep things uh, purposely pretty basic. Both mathematicians and stock traders alike tend to use uh, big words to purposely make things sound more special than they really are or maybe make themselves feel better. Uh, you're not going to really find any of that here, or at least I'm going to do my best to keep it simple. Two, we're going to be doing most of these things by hand. The idea here is to help you all grow in all of those fields mentioned above. There's plenty of pre-made packages for things like support vector machines and neural networks. The problem here, in my opinion, is this doesn't actually teach you anything, and it leaves no room for innovation. Now. Using basic machine learning principles to find the algorithm, that's going to be our first step. And that's usually the step most people finish on whether or not they use machine learning. The next question is not only to back test the algorithm you found, since that's what actually, um, well, what's actually going to end up happening is we're going to wind up with a quote unquote live trading algorithm, which basically means it's going to change over time. It will be a dynamic algorithm. But we're also going to do the next, and in my opinion, very important step, and that's to backtest that method that was used to find that algorithm. So what I mean by this is the following. It's with statistical certainty that if you look at a data set that you can find the best fit line, right? That's nothing special, yet we see this all the time where someone said, hey, look what I found. You know, here's this backtested strategy, and it makes X amount of money. That's no good, right? The true test is the forward test, the test on unseen and unaccounted for data. Therefore, if you've created a sort of quote unquote algorithm to define or derive the best trading strategy, then that algorithm used to find that strategy, right? The method to find that strategy must also have worked in the past against its quote unquote theoretical or actual literal future results, right? So you should also test that strategy against data you've, un you've in theory, not seen. So you can't actually backtest that method itself. And this is basically to decide whether or not it would have worked to use that method in the past to find an algorithm that you would have also done some backtesting on. Anyway, if you're just looking at the data set and you found the best algo for, for that, you know, including the backtesting, that's really cheating and the likelihood of that algorithm continuing to pay out in the future is statistically unfavorable. So now that we've swallowed that pill, let's go ahead and get all the tools uh, and things that we need to do this. So first we are on uh, syntex.com, which is my website, and all we're here for mostly is a file. I do suggest you guys take a peek around, but that's not what we're here for. I'm not trying to sell you all anything. Uh, what we're going to look for is the zip file. I've got two files located within that zip file. And to find that, you're going to go to syntex.com slash gbpusd.zip. Hit enter, and that should download uh, a zip file. And that zip file is going to contain two files within it. And these are the two files that you'll find. The first file is the uh, gbpusd forex ratio for one day. And the other file is the GBP USD ratio for one month. Obviously, you're going to need to extract this. But once you've extracted it, you can open up either of these. So we'll open this one. And you'll find yourself looking at uh, one day's worth of Forex data. Now, I didn't cheat you guys. 
or give you guys nothing to work with. This is actually, as you can see, 62,000 bits of data. It's bid ask tick data for this forex ratio, so it's pretty good data to train on to start with. The next file is a one month of the month of May, I think is what I cut out. Yeah. So you've got a now you've got a month's worth, which is actually uh, just over one point well it's one point six million lines here. So a lot of lines to work with and a lot of data to work with. So it should be pretty fun to use them. And the reason why I split them up is every time we're trying to work and at least develop this program, uh, using only you know hundred thousand lines versus one million lines is gonna make a sizable difference. So that's why we're we're gonna do it that way. Now, back to all the other things that we need. We're going to need a few more things just besides this Forex data, of course. And I also want to stress that even though we are uh, using Forex data, you can do these principles that we're going to go through can be used, um, obviously, for stocks as well. So don't feel like uh, if you're looking to do this with stocks that uh, this isn't going to work out for you. Now, the next most important thing, uh, or quite possibly more important than even the tick data, is that we go ahead and get Python and we're going to be looking for Python 2.7 so to get to Python go to python.org and go to download and what you're going to want to download is not 3.3 you want 2.7.5 and depending on what operating system you have uh, is going to be what you download if you do have a 64-bit operating system I highly suggest that you download the 64-bit version of Python Next, we have matplotlib. It is also, well, first you get there with matplotlib.org. Then you will go, um, well, it used to be up here, but I guess they've moved it on me right here, downloads. And then here, you can get the downloader. And again, you're going to want to match the downloader to what version of Python you downloaded or your Windows. Uh, again, I recommend 64-bit. If you have a 64-bit system, on, if you did download a 64-bit Python, you must. Subsequently, you're also going to need NumPy. Now, if you followed my rules and you've got a 64-bit version of Python, maybe you're wondering why you get a 64-bit version of Python. I've said this quite a few in or quite a few times in most of my videos. So, um, the reason you get 64-bit versus 32-bit is because 64-bit has no mem. Well, it has one, but it's huge. 32-bit. Uh, programs and applications are limited to two gigabytes of RAM usage maximum. Um, so naturally, if you have a, a relatively large file sizes, you're going to max out that two gigabytes of RAM pretty easily. So that's why I recommend 64. But you'll be able to get through this entire tutorial series, and you'll even be able to do some pretty cool stuff even with that two gigabyte limit. So don't run away if that's you. So if you did do that, the next thing we need is NumPy. So what Python allows us to do is program. Matplotlib is a package that works with Python that allows us to do graphing. And NumPy is a helpful um, little tool for uh, doing mathematical calculations. So to get NumPy, if you followed everything up to this point and you do have 64-bit, you're going to need to go to this link here. I'll put all these links in the description, especially this one because it's harder to find um, or at least read. But what we want here, and what this website is, is it's a bunch of 60, well, it's a bunch of installers, and it just includes 64-bit versions of a lot of packages that don't naturally or natively offer 64-bit installers. So a good example of this is NumPy, which uh, we'll find here. I just use a control F and type out NumPy. It's about halfway down the page. And again, there is the installers here. If you do have uh, only Windows, uh, like a 32-bit, you can also use uh, the install link here, or you could go to like sourceforge.net, I believe, uh, and you can get the other NumPy um, source code or the installer, depending on um, what kind of uh, computer you're on. So obviously, you know, if you've got like a Mac or something, or, or if you're on like a Linux distribution, something like that, you can use Git, whatever. But in the end. Just make sure you've got Python 2.7, matplotlib, and NumPy. And when you're all done and you've installed all of these things, um, you should be able to go to your start bar and pull up the Python command line. And it'll probably be black and not like this, but you can customize it. So that's just why mine's white. But anyway, you should be able to type the following things in. You should be able to say import matplotlib. You should be able to say import NumPy. And you should be able to say Import, well, that's it. <laughs> I was about to say import Python. Derp. Anyway, 
uh, you should be able to import matplotlib and you should be able to import numpy. If you can't do those two things, like if you go import and you actually spell numpy right, but this, and you get this, um, something has gone wrong. So if you're having any trouble uh, installing or you've got some sort of error going on, feel free to post a comment below and I'll try to help you guys out. So that's going to conclude the introduction uh, to what we're going to be getting into. And uh, hopefully you guys are excited. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support, your subscriptions. And until next time.